Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a go funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to Prophet Muhammad's treatment of non Muslims, Mufti Menk. I think I've reacted to something like this, maybe by not by Mufti Menk, but yeah, so without wasting time, let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of the Almighty be upon you all. My beloved brothers and sisters, another beautiful episode studying the life of this beautiful, great individual, Muhammad. May peace be upon him, the messenger, the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is important for us to realize that Muhammad, may peace be upon him, looked at every non-Muslim as a potential Muslim. He treated them with such respect and such honor that he attracted them to the faith. There was a time right at the beginning when no one had accepted his message yet as he came down from the cave and his wife was the first one to accept the message. But if we take a careful look, was she not from amongst those who also belonged to the pagan faith? Even though she may not have been so deeply engrossed, she belonged to the same society. But it is important to realize that the way he treated them and the way he spoke to them, the way he conveyed the message through his character, through his conduct, proved to us that their treatment is of utmost importance. And this is why whenever the elite of Mecca and the leaders of Mecca happened to call for Muhammad, may peace be upon him, he rushed to them because he was so concerned for their goodness and for their turning towards the, the worshipping of one God alone that he made sure that he rushed to them in case they had questions to ask and in case they were about to turn. And even though in a lot of the instances right at the beginning, they did not turn. In fact, they tortured him. He did not respond with similar torture. In fact, they harmed him. He did not respond with similar harm. There was a man known as Abu Jahl, who was a relative of Muhammad, may peace be upon him. And he was the leader of the Meccans. And at that particular time, he had harmed Muhammad, may peace be upon him, whilst he was praying near the Kaaba. And he had put on his back some harmful object. In fact, he hurt him to the degree that when the uncle of Muhammad, may peace be upon him, whose name was Hamza, later to be known as radiallahu an, and radiallahu an is a term that we use referring to the companions of Muhammad, may peace be upon him, which means may Allah be pleased with him. Uh, and the reason why we use this term is they sacrificed much in order to uh, progress in this beautiful faith and in order to convey the message to others. So it's important for us to pray for them as well. This man was not a Muslim as well, uh, Hamza. But when he came back from his hunting trip, he was advised and he was told by a slave girl that this is what happened to your nephew. Immediately he got upset and he declared at that time, that I am a Muslim. He told, his, he told uh, uh, Abu Jahl, how can you swear this young man and how can you harm him when I follow what he is saying and I follow what he brought? Because remember, Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was upon the highest level of character that a human being could ever get to. And this is mentioned in the Quran as well. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed, you are upon a very great level of character and conduct. Whatever the Quran has enshrined was actually practiced by this beautiful messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muhammad may peace be upon him. So he spoke with much kindness to the people around him. When they treated him badly, he treated them good in return. When they uh, harmed him, he prayed for them. If you take a look at the disbelievers of an area known as Ta'if, they harmed him so much that they drove him out of that particular city in such a disgraceful way that they made his body bleed from so many places and he was injured and leaving the city. And the narrations make mention of how the angels responsible for the mountains came to him by the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and told him that if you would like uh, us to crush these people between the two mountains that they live in because they were in a valley, if you would like us to crush them, we have been asked to obey your instruction. And immediately he said, I have been sent as a mercy. 
I have not been sent to punish the people. I've been sent as a mercy. And he prayed for them saying, Oh Allah, I ask you to guide their offspring if guidance is not written for them. So this was such a powerful prayer because we are taught that when you are oppressed at that particular moment, if you say a positive prayer for those who are oppressing you, perhaps it would have such a powerful impact because the prayer of he who is oppressed is heard far quicker than the prayer of an ordinary person. And this is something that is very, very interesting because if you look at how he prayed for them, later on they all accepted the faith of Islam. They turned to Islam and they considered him their leader. And this, these were the people of Thaqif. These were the people of Thaqif that uh, were in Ta'if. If you look at Muhammad, peace be upon him's treatment of them, it was a lesson for us all. Sometimes what we do is we curse the enemy so badly that it leaves behind a taste far bitter, far more bitter than what there was in the first place. Rather try praying for the people. Rather try uh, asking for goodness for them and see what happens. This is the way Muhammad, may peace be upon him, treated the non-Muslims. He then signed a treaty when he got to al Madin al munawwara with the Jewish people and with the people of the book that we will be together and we will protect one another. And what we will do is we will live side by side fulfilling the rights of each other. You will have your faith, you will fulfill it. We will have ours and we will fulfill it as well. And we will not harm one another. We will not do anything that will result in the detriment of another. We will not assist anyone who comes to harm from outside. Anyone who comes to harm either one of us shall not be assisted by the other. And this was just part of the treaty that Muhammad, may peace be upon him, had. It was, up, it was really fulfilled to a great degree until there came a time when it was broken, not by the Muslimin, but by the other. So this is why if we look at the treatment of the non-Muslims, we always have a very straightforward message that we respect you and we understand that you have your freedom of worship and so do we. And we understand that we should be discussing matters in terms of faith and religion in a respectable manner in order for us to understand one another. And this is what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. So much so that there was an entire surah which was revealed known as the disbelievers. And in it, the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَّ You have your faith and I have mine. So I do not worship what you do and you do not worship what I do, but you have your faith and I have mine. So this is the basis upon which we have uh, the, the relation with those who are not Muslim. So for those who think, for example, and this is happening more and more uh, as time passes, that Islam preaches uh, the killing of non-Muslims, that is absolutely absurd and it is untrue. Whatever had happened at the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, actually proves that Islam protected the non-Muslims in such a way that they were free to worship whatever they believed whilst they were under the protectorate of the Muslimin. And this is something that we need to learn. Also, the treatment was such, as I said, that every non-Muslim was considered a potential Muslim. And this is why there are so many Muslims across the globe today. People have reverted in their millions. Why? Because we have been taught how to be honest, to be upright, to be trustworthy, to be kind, to utter good words, to reach out in humanitarian assistance wherever it is needed and to be able to understand that what brings us together is humanity as well. So if we are not brothers in faith, we are at least brothers in humanity and we have so much uh, in terms of the common cause that we can work together in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may the Almighty use us to help one another in a way that we are rightly guided. جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Loved this video and the big shout out to the person that suggested this um, This is just trainers again Time and time again was shown that Muhammad was kind to everyone And if Muslims are going to love him At least follow his footsteps Love everyone, don't judge people Okay, this person doesn't follow Islam, I can't protect them. Okay, this person doesn't follow this, I can't help them. I can't be friends with them. It shouldn't be like that. The least you can do is communicate your faith with them in a respectable manner and the other should do the same as well. Just because you believe something doesn't mean we should always clash. Why are we clashing? If we can't be brothers in faith, like he said, 
let's be brothers in humanity there's so many things that we can learn from one another and we can actually thrive if we said okay you know what i respect what you believe in you respect what i believe in but let's work hard to maybe achieve this goal there's so many things that we can achieve and would even be living in a more peaceful um environment or world just love this entire message and how muhammad was the best example as to how he treated people hope we can also do the same as well let's not be quick to judge let's not discriminate let's just not um use religion as an excuse to dislike one another because that's not the way it's supposed to be otherwise make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it to the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video